Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I am showing you a new Pokemon trading card game deck that doesn't need to use any energy cards whatsoever. And if any of you got slightly worried when I uploaded a video about the video game earlier today, I uploaded a video about Snorlax in the video game, check it out, I think it's pretty good. Don't worry, I'm going to be making some VGC videos, because VGC's fun. But daily TCG videos, ladies and gentlemen, they're not going anywhere, because I love the trading card game too gosh darned much. I just happen to love the video game as well. Now, looking at the basics here, 120 HP is low. It's one of the worst things about the deck that your main attacker only has 120 HP. But don't forget that you can use bodybuilding dumbbells to put this up to 160, which makes it slightly less embarrassing. And you've got a resistance to psychic here. So against psychic attackers like Garbodor, you've got an effective HP of 180, which means you're going to need nine items before Garbodor can get a one hit KO. Yay! Of course they can use Field Blower to get rid of bodybuilding dumbbells which will both lower your HP to 120 and put another item card in the discard pile so that Trash Valanche does a little bit more damage to fuel it as it were. Retreat cost of 3 is very high, but you can use Heavy Ball, so it's not the end of the world. Weakness to fighting is a little bit annoying with stuff like Persimian and Marshadow and Gallade running around. But then again, you got 120 HP. Most of them are going to KO you without weakness. And the fact that you're a Dark type means you're not really hitting anything for weakness, which is sad. But it does mean you can take advantage of things like Reverse Valley to allow you to do an extra 10 damage. Which is nice. Now, Raticate does have a second attack here, Hyper Fang. 60 damage for one Dark Energy. If you flip Tails, however, it does nothing. And I could tell you that the Victini from Guardians Rising gives you a 75% chance of hitting that head. But to be perfectly honest, ladies and gentlemen, if you're using that attack something's gone wrong. The great thing about Raticate is attacking for zero energy, having way more room in your deck because you're not even playing energy cards, and of course, never again having one of those turns where you just couldn't find the energy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Enhanced Fang. For zero energy, 10 damage, but 60 if you have a Pokemon tool attached to Raticate. Don't worry, there's going to be a little section of the video where we look at tools you might wish to use. And you know what? That's right now. The main tool you really want to be using here is Choice Band. Choice Band means that against EXs or GXs you do 90 damage for zero energy. And that's fantastic. But then again, you may want some other tools for when you're not going against EXs or GXs. So maybe something like a Float Stone here. One of the things about not playing energy is that you're not going to have energy to manually retreat. So unless you're playing free retreaters, and I would suggest you play a bunch of them, you really are going to want to be playing some floatstone here. Especially if you play something like Tapu Lele, you can't retreat with energy, so playing floatstone would be good. And as a side note here, having a bunch of switching cards could also be quite fun, but don't forget nowadays that you've got Guzma. Guzma is a built-in switching card, so every deck is going to have slightly less trouble doing that switching because they can take advantage of Guzma. And the other one I'd really recommend here is Bodybuilding Dumbbells. You've got low HP, and in this deck you're really relying on having 120 HP Pokemon really attacking for you every single turn. Well, if you want to really seriously be rolling with that, then you've got to be prepared to add a little bit of bulk there. And one of the best ways to add said bulk is to go and rock some of them their weights. Now, a couple other main cards you might wish to consider when making an Alolan Raticate deck. Wally, for your turn one attack. What I love about Wally is that you don't need the energy as well. So in my recent Galissapod video, I talked about using Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag to search for a Wally. But I said with Galissapod, you need to get your active out of the active. 
and you need to have the energy and you need to get and it's just way too much to worry about not really the case here if you start with alolan ratata then you can just go and get your alolan raticate with a wally and be attacking straight away although do remember that if you don't have a tool attached to alolan raticate you will only be doing 10 damage but it is something to consider and along with that it might be worth playing some free retreaters to help you get that turn one maybe something like a Tapu Coco, for instance, that has free retreat and a decent attack. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is a dirty little secret about this deck. Just because you can play zero energy doesn't mean you can't play any energy. Maybe you play a couple of double colorless energy so that you can attack with this Tapu Coco if you are so inclined at some point during the game. Certainly against some decks here, as we're going to see, your damage output is a little bit low with Alolan Eradicate, so you could here have a little bit of fun with something like Tapu Coco spreading some damage and having free retreat. So that way if you get the one turn one you can attack with Alolan Raticate but if you don't you can be attacking with Tapu Coco. Speaking of doing a little bit of extra damage might I suggest Professor Kukui. You do an extra 20 damage and draw two cards and here as we're going to see in a minute and as we've already seen really you're doing 60 damage 90 to an EX or a GX with choice ban that's not bad but you're really not hitting all that much. There are going to be times you want to be doing more damage than that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where Professor Kukui comes in. And I mentioned it earlier, but let's give it one more quick shout out now. Reverse Valley can help you do an extra 10 damage. Just putting it out there. And you may wish to be running Eco Arm and or Puzzle of Time here. Do remember that Eco Arm is about to rotate out after Worlds to allow you to get your tools back. In some games, four of your bodybuilding dumbbells might not be enough, or four of your choice band might not be enough. That is where Eco Arm or Puzzle of Time comes in to get them back. Now, the whole point of this deck is that you're playing no or at least very few energy. So like we've seen in decks like Persimian, you all of a sudden have a lot more room to play with. And... The question really is, what are you going to do with that room? Well, EVs are one thing. Now, again, this is only in our short window until we get the rotation on the 1st of September. But you can rock here with Flareon and Vaporeon and Jolteon to do extra damage, double damage, in fact, to certain Pokemon. Now, Jolteon at the moment isn't great because there isn't really that much that's weak to lightning around at the moment. Eveltal's seen a huge downturn in play and some people are saying that Mega Rayquaza might be a sleeper pick for Worlds, but outside of that, lightning really is, at the moment, is not a weakness you really need to be trying to hit. Having said that, the other two really are. You can bring out your Flareon and you're hitting weakness against Decidueye, which is big at the moment, Lissapod, which may be a good pick for Worlds, and Metagross, which especially with the hype surrounding Gardevoir at the moment, is certainly a deck a lot of people are hyping up. Similarly, your Vaporeon can allow you to hit weakness on Volcanion and Turtonator, both cards and Pokemon and decks which are seeing a bit of hype at the moment. Now, one thing you can't play along with the EVs, you can play them both but not at the same time, is Garbodor. Let's go block some abilities. Now, of course, you'll be blocking your own EVs here. But outside of that, you're not really reliant on abilities. And you can shut down a lot of decks at the moment that are like Metagross, like Decidueye, but also like Gardevoir, which really relies on abilities at the moment. This could be a lot of fun to play. And, of course, you could play this with the other Garbodor and just play a couple of Psychic Energy to use this as a backup attacker if Alolan Raticate isn't doing enough damage for you. And the great thing is here that the Garbodor with the ability needs to have a tool to turn on that ability and Alolan Raticate needs tools, so you ain't going to be short of a couple if you're playing this deck properly. But maybe you don't want to play Eevees, maybe you don't want to play Garbodor. How about a little bit of good old-fashioned disruption? You're not hitting for a huge amount of damage, but you don't need to play 
energy here. So you use that space in your deck to slow down your opponent. Maybe you play a delinquent to bring down their ham size. Maybe crushing hammer, enhanced hammer, team flare grunt to get rid of all of their energy. Maybe you play some red card, especially on turn one, to really limit their options from the first turn of the game going forward. That certainly is one option. With a Lolan Raticate here, you're doing decent but not exceptional damage. So you need to either be doing more damage with things like Kukui, Choice Band, Reverse Valley and the Eevees, or you need to be slowing your opponent down so that your damage goes further using things like Garbodor, Delinquent and Hammers. Now, in terms of Alolan Ratata, there is a clear choice here. The one from Sun and Moon is approximately one billion times better. It's got three retreat rather than a retreat of one, and it does 20 for zero energy, rather than maybe doing 60 on the second turn for one energy. Not even close, use the Sun and Moon Alolan Ratata. And there is a second Alolan Raticate here that you can use. The one from Sun and Moon. I do quite like Evil Orders. Double colorless energy, search your deck for a number of cards up to the number of your bench Pokemon and put them into your hand. Quite good for setting up, especially if you're playing a disruption style, but it costs energy. Maybe if you're playing Tapu Koko anyway, but otherwise, I would think leave this one be. And as a side note here, you may need cards like Rescue Stretcher and Super Rod. Well, Rescue Stretcher, because you're not playing any basic energy, or you might not be, to recover these Alolan Raticates so that you can have six in a game. Is this deck any good? The answer is maybe. The damage output is a little bit low. The HP is a little bit lower than we might like. But overall, 90 damage for zero energy, potentially hitting four different weaknesses. I quite like this. Galissapod hits 120 for one energy and is beefy. This hits 90 for zero energy and isn't beefy. The other thing to remember is, without something like Reverse Valley, you're only hitting 60 on a non-GX. So that's like a free hit KO on something like Greninja. Honestly here, I think the best build of this is with the Eevees and a little bit of disruption. It's going to be matchup based, but I certainly think it's got a little bit of potential. But tell me what you think about Alolan Raticate. There is a comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy and Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio for some live action. And if you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, etc., head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio. CG Radio. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.